That is smoothed out quite nicely. So I started with 60. The spirits have taken hold of that sander. Let's see how I turn this inch thick live edge slab into this great looking table in the entryway of my house. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Woodland Reboot. I've got another project that I can take care of or I can start to tackle here on the workbench. And this is the project of building a nice table for the entryway, the hallway in my house back in Ottawa. So what I've done already that I don't have on video is that I've taken two pieces of it's either elm or ash and I just can't remember. I think this one is elm and it's a live edge. You can see right there. So I've taken them and I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera there, but there's a line here, a line here, a line here. Planed them, edged them, used a biscuit joiner and I've got three biscuits in along the joint that I glued, glued and then clamped together and we arrive at this stage right here where we've got a slab that is about an inch thick. Like I said, it has a live edge. And what I had done just recently, and I want to put my gloves on to show you this, I've had a pair of legs made up. There's a machine shop just down the road from here. Um, I've had these legs made up. It's going to give the table a bit of an industrial look. I want to clean these off and then give them a clear coat. So again, I want to go for that industrial look. I don't want to paint them a solid black or another color. And uh, with the legs, the table will stand a total of 32 inches off the floor and it fits in nicely. I've designed it to fit into an area, uh, the entry hall as I said as I come into my house. So what I'm going to do right now is just quickly jump over to some footage of me working outside a week ago or so cleaning up this live edge. So let's jump over there. So the little project right now is just to clean up this live edge here. Okay, now we're back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my protective gear, earphones, mouth guard, and I need to go find some glasses and then get underway with sanding. I've got my little DeWalt palm sander. Sanding the surface, I'm going to start with a heavy course, a nice 60 grit to really take out some uh, of the edge here where the boards were clamped together. And then I'm going to work my way up to probably 300 or 400 grit to really smooth out the surface and get it ready for painting. In terms of the joint between the two pieces of wood, I've got a bit of a gap, a very tiny hairline gap right here, maybe a little bit right there. So what I'm going to do is use a little bit of the sawdust that I've just made, some of my glue, make a little paste and let's get it in there. So there's the paste I've made. Let's take a little bit of that and stick it in this little crack here. It's going to dry very quickly or freeze very quickly, one or the other.
Okay, that's filled. We're going to let that dry and then we're going to sand that off later. So I've sanded it quite uh, vigorously with um, 60 grit and I've switched over to, I don't know if you can see it there, 150. Just cut a piece out of that sheet there and stuck it on the sander. So let's plug this in and this over here is now dried so we'll clean that up. See how it looks. Okay, what I need to do, I think, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is, that was 150, I'm going to hit it with 220, and then I think that's a day. We're going to call it a day in terms of smoothing it out, and then it's going to be on to the, uh, finishing it up. Man, this stuff is so hard. So smooth now too. Mm, getting there. Well, I hope there isn't too much dust on the camera lens there. That is smoothed out quite nicely. So I started with 60. The spirits have taken hold of that sander. Started at 60, 150, 220. It is super smooth. So what I'm going to do now is take this home, work on it in the garage and probably finish it up in the basement with uh, coats of some, it's not tongue oil, I can't remember the product that I have but you'll see later in the video. Hey everyone, I'm in the basement shop of my home here in Ottawa and I mentioned I was going to bring the project or some, some elements of the project home here to work on them because I need a bit of a controlled environment and I've got the temperature I need for the uh, finishing I'm going to use and um, just makes it easier to do the project that way. I'm on my workbench here. I don't really need the drop cloth here on the top of the workbench but I'm doing that so it gives you some contrast from the slab of the uh, side table. Just turned off the freezer there. Hopefully I remember to turn that back on. Now, I've got a product that I've used before that I'm using for the project here. Hopefully that focuses. It's called Tried and True. Original wood finish. Um, very simple uh, finishing product to use non-toxic, uh, no fumes whatsoever, no off-gassing, just a simple 
Apply it as thinly as possible, wetting the wood. Let that sit for an hour, then come back and wipe it dry with a rag, then repeat. And you keep doing it until you're satisfied with the, uh, the sheen that you have on the, on the finish, on the surface of the product. So, the last you saw me, I was uh, sanding. What I've done recently is put a, a beveled edge on the two side edges of the uh, side table. My wife asked for that, so those are there. I've uh, cleaned it, I've uh, vacuumed it, wiped it down, so this is ready for this product. Let's get going on it. So it doesn't have to be heavy, you've just got to make sure you wet the entire surface. It is very thick to go on, so I'm going to brush that back and forth. Just making sure that I've got an even coat across the entire surface here. I'm either going to do two or three coats over the course of the next uh, 48 hours on this. Okay, we're going to let this sit for an hour, then I'm going to come back and uh, burnish it up with the cloth. Alright, time to get some hot water for my brush. The idea here, following the instructions on the can, is to burnish this, wipe it down until your hand uh, doesn't come up with any of the product on your fingertips. <clears throat> so a little bit damp still. Getting there, not a lot coming off on the rag right now. So the idea following the instructions on the can is to wipe it down, rub it down, burnish it until you don't see any product coming off on the cloth. I'm getting very close to that right now. Yeah, it's looking very good. Oh yeah, that's ready for a second coat now. Okay, this is the second coat. I like a finish with this kind of product as opposed to a Varathane or a paint-like product just because, um, you know, with the rubbing and the buffing process, you don't end up with possible paint glitches. And after this, after I buff it out, um, this coat, after this coat, I'm going to hit it with some steel wool. Some uh, four zero steel wool, which will just knock down any rises that have come out of this process and uh, then one more coat and this sucker is going to have no imperfections in terms of the finished product on it. Okay that's a second coat done. Again another hour for that to set in before I buff it out. Okay here's the second rub down.
clean up the legs a bit just to uh, bring out a little bit more shine to them. And what I think I'm going to do to start it off is I'll use my angle grinder and this wheel here, which is a wheel of um, a sandpaper wheel. 280 grit sandpaper wheel. And if that doesn't work, I'll uh, possibly go back to the wire brush and or even try this disc. Okay, so back here in my basement workshop again, working on the, so I've done the sanding, uh, ordered the legs, and what you saw me do the other day at the uh, Reboot property was sand them, not sand them, but actually buff them down, so it's, uh, it's not a perfect buff by any means, but gives them kind of a uh, industrial, or more of an industrial look, I think, and then what I did with which I did not film is that I used a clear coat uh, product the other day uh, over the last few nights actually to be precise precise uh, clear coated the metal and so uh, that's not going to oxidize and rust on me at all so let's move on with the next step which is securing or mounting the tabletop on this set of legs So what I've done is I've measured five inches from the edge of the table. So the legs are five inches in from the edge of the table. And they are, I can't remember what it is, but I think it's two and a half. Two and a quarter from the front edge, two and a quarter from the back. And what I'm going to do now is take a mallet and a punch. and hit it where I would like to drill for the screws. For the screws, the slab is an inch thick. So I've got three quarter inch number eight screws. Okay, so that's ready to be drilled. I always remember that this wood, again I can't remember if it's elm or ash, it's one of the two. Um, I believe it is elm, but whether it's elm or ash, they are extremely hard, hard woods. So pre-drilling is a requirement or you won't get these these bits in. And um, this is super solid once you get them in. is secure. 
Okay. Now, get it upstairs and get it ready for a reveal. Okay, I'm coming through with this side table. Let's get it into position here in the front hallway. It's going to be a little bit off center here so that as you come in the door, you're not hitting it. Okay, everyone, here is the table. It's in position here in the front hallway. We want to get a mirror. We've got a chair for that area right there. The idea is you can come in the front door and you have a place to put mail, keys, the like. Uh, there'll be a flower pot. We'll get that stuff back on here. There was an old little table in the corner there. And again, the main features of this build, it's live edge. It's an inch thick. Uh, elm, I believe it's elm. I've said several times it's either elm or ash, but I do believe this is elm. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments. And um, I went out uh, just down the road from the Red Bar and the Reboot property, there is a machine shop for all the farmers out there in the rural area where I've got that property, and I had them fabricate some legs for me. So these have turned out really well. I buffed them out, I put a clear coat on them, and so I think we've got a pretty nice side table here. And this new table makes a big difference in our entryway. It adds character, it adds some warmth, and it's very functional. With the family photos, it welcomes you as you come in, providing you a place to put your keys, mail, etc. It's also a project I think many of you could do, so give it a shot, and I think you'll be impressed by what you can make. A lot more. Just the pictures are fine, the other stuff I'm missing. So, Miss Reboot, what do you think? It looks awesome. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, guys, there it is side entry table, top of the table 32 inches, check out all the details in the video, I like it, beautiful finish, live edge, give it a go yourself, you can do it.